Welcome to the Sean Bowles Show. I'm Sean Bowles, your host, and we have a lot to talk about today. I can't wait to hear from you guys. Hi, Shane, who just joined one of our members of our YouTube channel, but we're also on Facebook and also Rumble as well. Make sure to share this with one of your friends. Subscribe and hit notifications on YouTube or like us on Facebook so you can get our daily content that we come out with, our videos, our shorts, our reels. You're going to love them. And I know we have a lot to talk about in this season of life because so many things are happening and we're going to start right away with talking about a Top Gun pilot who's teaching people how to hear from God, but also is going to weigh in on the reality of the movie Top Gun. There's also a rise in Christian kids' cartoons and content because there's been so much liberal agenda, wokeness, critical race theory, all these things that we do not need in our kids' cartoons, edutaining them into a mindset and a philosophy that's just not from God. We also have two-time boxing heavyweight George Foreman report that he had a visitation through a near-death experience with Jesus and we're going to talk about that in this new movie as well. And at the end of the show, we have my prophetic perspective. That's all about how Christians can be a part of healing the shooting violence in America. All this and more on today's show. But I really want to talk real fast just before we get into our sponsor. And I'm going to talk about this in length in a little bit. But I, I mean, I saw a cartoon this week, you guys, where a cow, this is a preschool cartoon, a cow is sharing that it no longer feels male nor female, but is non-binary and gives gender pronouns that are not male and female and starts to explain to the other cows how it's going on a journey and that they should all affirm him. And I'm watching a children's cartoon on Nickelodeon. I couldn't believe it. And this is happening all the time. I don't know if you know, on uh, Muppet Babies, Gonzo has gone drag and feels very comfortable wearing women's clothing now. This is happening on a major level and we're seeing it destroy Disney. It's, it's taken a huge market share out of Disney and also out of Nickelodeon. And I'm excited that we get to talk about this today because Christians are doing something in the space. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But I want to give a massive thank you to Birch Gold for helping make this podcast a reality. They're our sponsor of the day. You know, in these uncertain times, it's essential to keep your hard-earned savings safe and sound. That's where Birch Gold comes in. They've got your back when it comes to protecting your IRA or 401k. And guess what? They put together an amazing free guide just for you. Inside, you're going to uncover the secret to shielding your savings from stock crashes, keeping your money safe from inflation, and adding some serious diversity to your financial plan with physical gold and silver I love physical gold and silver way more than uh, a lot of the other investments we can make today, especially in this unstable economy. So are you ready to start securing your financial future? All you have to do is head over to birchgold.com forward slash Sean Bowles, and they will give you a fantastic guide and it's yours free. Don't miss out on this opportunity to take control of your finances, get the peace of mind you deserve. Go there right now. You're going to love it. Also, if you love our content, make sure to subscribe. Like I told you before, we have members as well on our YouTube channel. And our newest members are Elizabeth Marrero and uh, Boku Vivante. I love that name so much. And I probably said it wrong, but I, I, it's just such a pretty name. So thank you so much for being our members. And our members help us to make this show. You can also go to our website, bullsministries.com, and do a one-time donation or a continuing partnership. And we give back to both our members and our partners. So make sure to be a part of that so you can get our free resources, our members-only meetings, our partner-only meetings, and also become part of our prayer list by being a partner. And it'll be great. So. We have some incredible stories today. The first one, I'm going to just go over some of our, uh, there's four or five stories that I came up with this week, just going, wow, what's happening right now? This is really interesting. One of my favorite stories of the week was PBS and NPR got, got a government funded label on Twitter and they threatened now to leave Musk, Elon Musk, who owns Twitter. He says they intervened and interfered with the 2020 election and have also taken money from Bill Gates for advertising his vaccinations. And so they basically are getting this new tag that's called government funded label. If you have at least 20% of your income comes from the government, you're going to get the label. And that means that when people are looking at, at you know, different mail or, or mail sources, uh, different news sources, they're going to look and see government funded and maybe think there's some bias involved in that government funded, especially because most of the government funded organizations lean very left. And that's huge for us in a freedom of speech win. And I thought Twitter, that was brilliant of them to do. They both said that they're going to leave Twitter, which uh, they haven't left Twitter yet. So we'll see what happens. But they, they threatened to leave. And I think a lot of companies are feeling that the pinch of freedom of speech and also where we've had to, you know, if we report something on vaccinations or Trump or something else, and immediately we get in the bottom, I'll probably just because I said that we'll get in the bottom of our YouTube, uh, you know, on YouTube itself, it'll say something about the CDC. And so the same thing is now going for the people on the left is that they're, if they're being Given government money, they're going to be uh, addressed that way. And I think that's brilliant. I think it's so good. Well, also, George Foreman, you may not know this, but he's a two-time heavyweight boxing champion of the world, which is amazing. 
And he almost died. And right after he lost a match and he had a vision of Jesus when he did it. This is so powerful because since that moment, Foreman has dedicated his life to ministry. I don't know if you know that, but he's been spreading a message of hope and faith in God. And his experience has taught him that there's always a second chance, even for someone as well known as George Foreman, who had had a lot of past history of things that he thought God wouldn't forgive him for. And yet God did. And he's gone on to achieve great things in and out of the ring. But his faith and his ministry remained the center of his life. And he's sharing the story through in a powerful way through an upcoming movie called Big George Foreman. And I just think this is an interesting story because I've been praying and prophesying for entertainers, entertainment people, and also to you and our audience, believing that many major celebrities, athletes, entertainers are going to lend their reputation to their kingdom career, what God's going to do through their ministry, through their life, through their testimony. And this is one such man who's been a forerunner of that for a long time. And I'm so proud of him. I'm so glad he's releasing this movie. And I can't wait to see it. But we also have something interesting that's happened in the vein of that, which is Chance the Rapper is going to headline a revival event coming up. And this is this is brilliant. The spiritual voyage of Grammy Award winning musician Chance the Rapper is leading him to headline an evangelistic event connected to the offshoot of the Asbury Revival and it's both controversial because of some of his choices in the past few years to a lot of Christians that don't know that he should be doing this. But it's also very exciting because he's on the spiritual journey and he wants to lend his reputation, his career's credibility for evangelism. Known for his openness about his relationship with God, he's not been shy at all. He's been posting on Instagram and social media about this. He embarked on a global journey to study the Bible, seeking a deeper connection with God. And back in 2018, Chance announced his religious sabbatical and an Instagram post featuring his newborn nephew, Charlie Matthew. And he shared with his fans that he was heading out of the country to learn more about the word of God. And he admitted that he was relatively unfamiliar with the Bible at that time. So he was raised as a Christian in his household. He felt it was time to take faith into his own hands. And he dedicated time to reading the Bible. And he also said, I'm going to quit cigarettes and any other bad habits that keep me from God. The 25-year-old rapper at the time expressed a determination to complete his spiritual journey, cigarette-free with four or five books of his reading list. Since that initial announcement, Chance has been keeping his fans updated on his spiritual journey through social media. But in a recent post, he shared a heartwarming picture of his daughter, Kin, uh, Kinsley Bennett, accompanied by the caption, train up a child the way they, she should go. And it seems he's not only seeking a deeper connection with God and himself, but he's passing it on to the next generation and now is doing it to other events, which is awesome. So he's talked to more than, I think it's 10 million people on Instagram who are following him and he's, he's given scriptural passage and about his spiritual growth, talked very clearly about it. Well, he's headlining the Fill the Stadium FTS, an evangelistic event created for college students, uh, by college students, for college students. And he's come under criticism for featuring this rapper, Chance the Rapper, in the church. But I think this is an excellent, excellent uh, choice for this event. I think it's awesome. Chance is going to be joined at Fill the Stadium event by lineup, including Carrie Job. Maverick City Music's Chandler Moore and evangelist Nick Hall, who's putting on the event. The event will be a turning point for cultural at college level and a catalyst of positive changes in OKC where it's at and beyond. And the FDS website reads, the event is scheduled to take place at the University of Oklahoma on April 29th. And again, I think regardless of controversy, regardless of chances, other choices he's been making, he's been on a spiritual journey very publicly. He has Christian friends surrounding him. And this is a chance for him to explore how God has done so much in his own testimony, but to give that testimony to the, that crowd and to those people. And I think it's going to be really powerful and empowered. I'm excited for him. And again, it goes back into major celebrities are going to be lending their reputation for the gospel. And we're on the, the hind speed or the, the, the tail end of the Asbury revival. And FTS is doing these events like this, fill the stadium events where they're seeing God move powerfully. And I think it's just an incredible partnership. We saw this in the Jesus People Movement with, I mean, John Wimber himself, who started the Vineyard Movement, was one of the Righteous Brothers who became a pastor. And all these musicians started to populate, uh, all these major musicians began to populate the Jesus People Movement. And there was a mu musical move at the same time as a revival. And we're going to see that again. Uh, next, I want to talk about Pastor Rick Warren. And he's been sharing his health struggles recently He's one of my favorites. He shared that he's had quite a battle that he's in with a rare neurological uh, neuro, yeah, neurological disease called spinal, and I can't say the word, myoclonus, that causes spasms and blurs in his vision when he gets a jolt of adrenaline. And this can be very debilitating. His book, Purpose Driven Life, has been read by at least 32 million people and defined what having a purpose and identity in Christ could look like in the fastest way any generation's ever entered into that theme before. And he's also pastored an amazing church called Saddleback Church, which is no easy feat in Southern California. And he's no stranger to controversy inside and outside of the church. Rick is not done and he needs a body that lifts him up that actually can be useful. 
and he needs our body to pray for him right now. So he and his wife have taken a stand for mental health, even sharing their own story with their son. They've also been voices in many mainstream cultural issues, often being quoted by politicians, newspapers like the LA Times, New York Times, and celebrities. And our prayers are with Pastor Rick and his family, believing he still has a lot of destiny left. So pray with me. And we can pray now, God, heal Rick Warren in Jesus' name. Well, we actually want to help you learn how to have spiritual authority and pray. And I just want to just state this right after that story about Rick, because we want to pray powerful prayers for supernatural healing that get results. And we're doing an event this month with Hona Tantalito, who's a pastor here locally in Los Angeles. And this event is for people who want to know how to pray for healing and need impartation and some, you know, a spiritual shot in the arm, so to speak, of faith. And he's going to be teaching biblical based prayers and healing and then answering your questions live. So you want to join us for this two hour event on April 27th from 5 to 7 p.m. through our Spiritual Growth Academy. And you don't have to enroll in the entire academy to come to the event. But if you do enroll, you get all the classes and events for one low monthly price. And we have an event right now on, or I'm sorry, a class right now on dreams, visions, and encounters. And it's going on right now with Steve Maddox, who's a dream expert. He knows how to biblically interpret dreams like no one I know. And this has live components, but also watch anywhere videos. So head over to bullsministries.com, click on the academy uh, or the banner, and you can get either the event with Hona Toledo or the class coming that's happening right now with Steve Maddox. You can catch up to the classes he's already done for the last two weeks. They're four-week classes, so it's an easy on-ramp into understanding your dreams and encounters and visions. Well, we have an incredible, incredible interview I did earlier this week with uh, an, a friend of mine, Ed Rush, who's become a business coach, but he was a fighter pilot, Top Gun fire, fighter pilot. And he's been teaching people. He went from business coaching, that a very successful business coaching, to saying, wait a minute, the secret sauce is actually hearing God. So I want you to watch this interview now. Today on the show, I have Ed Rush. And Ed is a business coach, but he's also a Marine fighter pilot. He literally is someone that when I was watching Top Gun, I thought about immediately because he has the real life experience of combat hours in the air. And today I wanted Ed to talk to us because he's coaching people in this volatile time where banks are collapsing and where the interest rates are going up. It's hard to buy a house. It's hard to sell a house. And our economy might be getting worse. And yet Ed has faith and he has a different report than what you might see on popular news media right now. And so I wanted him to give you a God report about what's happening and also give you an opportunity to really hear God for yourself in this time. And that's exactly what he trains people to do all the time. Well, Ed, we're so glad to have you. Well, I want to get right into our real interview, which is what you do now, which is you help to make business people, to give them courage and hope that even the weird economy that we're in, where the interest rates, again, just went up again. And where people are afraid of housing, where people are afraid of start. I mean, we had the tech banks could collapse. So people are, aren't getting the same funding they could have got even three weeks ago now. So people are afraid even in the startup world, like, can I start something? Can I do something that's yeah. significant right now? The stock market's crazy. I was looking at today versus even three weeks ago. I was yep. looking at just some of the big stocks that you think are never going to be harmed. And they're just, they're all time lows or they're at record lows. So in the midst of that, like we, if you paint the picture that CNN and a Fox, everybody gives, don't do anything because it's scary. Just tuck and duck and buy relief supplies. But you're in a very different boat because you're helping people to not only launch new products or new businesses, or sometimes they're not new, just going to another level scale up. But there's a secret sauce in all of this that you believe in that has really come to you over the last few years. Tell us about this. So God gave me this vision. I won't go into the details on it. But he showed me the economic system changing, essentially. And it's, by the way, it connects to some things you've been saying recently, Sean, um, publicly about the economy and where Jesus is in the economy. You've been very, very out, outspoken about this. And in this, the thing that I was praying the other day, and God, I felt God's urgency that when the economy shifts, his people, you, as you're listening to the show, need to be influential in the new system or the new mm -hmm. fundamentals of the system. Because if we're not, it's going to be run by the same, um, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be nice with the words I say. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> so was character, same, you caught yourself. Yeah, well, so like uh, the same people who were doing it before. Now the key, by the way, and this is really where the rubber meets the road. This is where it gets tactical. Like what I teach people to do is ask God questions specifically about their business and get answers. But much like we've had this conversation before, Sean, a lot of times as, as a believer, you know, we hear from God or we hear from God from other people and they speak things into our lives. And sometimes those things don't happen. And I got to tell you, when that happened in my life, quite a few times, it broke my heart. I couldn't figure out like, did God abandon me? Did I abandon God? Did I make a million mistakes? What was the, what's the, what's the problem there? And what I realized is there are certain things, not that God can't do, because clearly God can do anything, 
but there yeah. are some, some things that God won't do. So for example, if God wants to give you money, but you are what I call a grand central station of money. In other words, money just flows through you because you have some mindset that rejects money. Well, God could be answering your prayers, giving you money, and you could literally be giving it away or pushing it away. And Sean, I've seen, I've seen friends of mine who I've been trying to help and mentor for years who have literally pushed away every blessing that God wow. sent them wow. out of a spirit of false humility, really out of, a, out of a spirit of like, you know, they, they heard when John said he will increase and I will decrease. And they said, I love that verse. So I want, I don't want anything. And so they've yeah, been asking God, God, yeah. God for money and God's been delivering them the connections and the influence and the wealth, and they've been pushing it away. And so when I say God can't do it, sometimes God won't. And he, he will not for the most part, violate our human will and our volition. And so yeah. what I do is I teach people to cross the bridge between the word that they receive from God to training their mind to be able to receive what God's coming. And I'm very, in the book, I get very detailed about the three parts of the mind, conscious, subconscious, and super conscious, and how to train, use the words of God to train and recode your mind. I could show you scientifically wow. how this works, how neurons literally. I that word, that recode mind. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it was almost a subtitle of the book, by the way. It, and it was like how to disconnect your neurons and reconnect them to a new thought pattern. And miracles happen naturally, not even supernaturally, naturally when this begins to happen because you start to attract the things that God's sending to you and you keep them, which is fun. Wow. I just, I love this. And I think about some of the stories that you and I know that we can't tell of <laughs> business leaders who are in the, in, a, in the midst of you know, a market like this where you can't get financing for a venture capital for $25 million for a tech company, possibly because of what's going on. But God's already laid up so much wealth. There's out of the top 100 billionaires, over 72 say that there's a Christian faith. And we've met with some of them. I mean, it's they're real Christians. And a couple of them are hearing God so strongly that one's going to change the aviation industry. He hasn't moved forward in 50 years. He's, he's changing it right now with some, some projects he's working on or another one's changing the um, food oil industry, like this just all these different things. But we think that because of what the report is in the market, that that's what we're limited to. And I love what you're saying, because when we hear from God, and these are people who've heard from God, and they now have billions of dollars, first generation billionaires, and they've heard from God, they are changing whole industries and whole markets, because that's what God does is that he moves the needle, he changes everything. And so I really love what you're saying, we do need to learn how to ask those questions. I'm so glad you have a book about this. <laughs> and you provide the service for business leaders. So as we end, even though we're talking about the whole market, tell us about what you're doing and how people can get involved. Yeah, super, super. Thank you. I'll be quick about this. So I've got this book, you've I just sent you one, by the way, finally got my I got it today. I, you I got did. It. Okay, cool. I sent you one of these in the mail. I mean, it's like took me forever to get these from the, my printer. But um, yeah, the book's called God Talks. You can get it, by the way, at godtalks.com. It's a very simple URL, um, godtalks.com. And it's, in, it's available in all forms on Amazon. And what I have a, an accompanying the book is a series of audios that essentially are like, they function like guided conversations where you get immersed in some music, you get to listen to God and take notes, and I show you how to recode your mind. The promise of the book is very simple. Uh, I teach you how to ask God questions, get answers, and then use those answers. This is the important part to recode, literally, physically, uh, uh, scientifically recode your mind uh, wow. for success. So it's a blast. Well, thanks for being here with us today. It's awesome, Matt. I always love when you're with us. But I want to encourage everybody to get this book. And also, Ed is a business coach. So find Ed online and you're going to really enjoy if you need that right now, especially some of you who are in crisis. This is the perfect time to include God and include Ed in a way maybe you haven't done before. How do they find you as a coach? Yeah, actually, you know, I did this on your show last week, too. I'm just going to give you my email address. It's coaching, C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G at edrush.com. That goes directly to me. I don't usually do this, but I'm just doing this for your folks, Sean, since you're so connected to the business world. Um, that doesn't go through an assistant, doesn't, doesn't go through my team. It comes to me and I will respond to you. So uh, I'd love wow. to connect hear your That's story. That's a huge no one else has ever done that on our show except for you. That's amazing. So that's a huge offer because to have a personal email of somebody who will actually help you is a huge deal. So I'm going to encourage you to take advantage of that. Ned, thanks. It's always good to have you. Thank you, Sean. Honored to be here, buddy. I'm so glad we had Ed on the show. And actually, we have an extended clip of that coming out on YouTube this week, as well as later on in the show, I'm going to talk about the prophetic perspective about school violence and shootings and what Christians can do about it. And is there nonviolent options that can happen that aren't just gun control? And so we're going to be talking about that in a few minutes. Before we get there, though, I would just want to say hi to some of our YouTube members like Randy. It's so good to see you on here and Tyler Feller and Shane and others that are on here. I think I saw a couple more on here as well. Uh, and then we also have just a lot of friends on Facebook. 
We are being a little suppressed because of uh, covering some of the subjects we covered last week with politics. And so it caused us to not get notifications on for Facebook today. And it also caused us to um, kind of be shadow banned a little bit behind the scenes. So our normal viewing numbers are not here today. So I'm gonna encourage you guys, if you can, to share it out, tell people what we're doing, tell people we have this here. Also, this comes out as a podcast as well later on in the day. So if you ever can miss it in the morning, you can subscribe to our podcast and you get it that way as well. But I, I just saw there's a lot of needs for prayer for, for physical healing. So I wanna stop for just a minute before we do our next story, just for our live crew. We'll edit this out for our pray.com and for our podcast and everything else. But just for you who are here live, I want to just pray for you and just pray that God heals you because I feel the healing presence of Jesus. And so if you need a healing right now, just I want you to put what healing you need in the YouTube comments or in you know chat or in the Facebook chat, because this is for real. And I'm seeing there's, you know, there's many people here that you need it. And I believe God is coming. And I, I don't know if you know this about my story is that I had a debilitating back condition where I had three deteriorating discs and two were shattering to the point where the doctors were giving me no hope after multiple treatments and x-rays and physical therapy and the whole thing. They were saying within 10 years, you're going to be using a walker and probably eventually in a wheelchair. And during that time, I just, I kept seeing myself and what God had shown me to be able to be in places like this and share with you, but also to go to nations where they don't have handicap ramps, you know, places in the IDP camps and war zones and places that I've been to for now decades. I've traveled the world for 27 years and been able to see some really profound things in the world happen. And I, I kept just seeing that that was my future. You know, I was only 19 at the time when this happened. And I kept seeing like, this can't be my story. And because you have a bigger story for my life that doesn't involve being handicapped. And so God, I pray for your sake that you would heal my body, Jesus. By your stripes, I'm healed. By your blood that was poured out, I don't want any of it wasted. And I remember as I saw that in the spirit, as I saw just, and when I say that, I didn't have a vision. I just felt like that connection to the reality of what Jesus did for me. And I felt a connection for what I needed in my body for his sake, that I was healed. I was supernaturally healed within a week of that. I was prayed for. And I'd been prayed for a lot of times before I was actually healed. And that's part of the process is just being faithful to say, I'm going to, I'm going to, Get the healing prayer whenever I can. Maybe your church has an altar call to the service and you go get the healing prayer. Or maybe there's a prayer team locally or uh, healing rooms locally that you can go to. But I'd encourage you to get prayer until there's healing. If you know that this is not part of your story, this sickness, this condition, this disability in your body, then, then you have a responsibility to say, God, I'm not going to stand and live this way as though this is my permanent reality. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight for something greater. And that fight takes a lot of energy and a lot of faith. But it's worth doing because I now don't have a back injury. I'm now, you know, my 40s. And for I haven't had a back injury since I was 20 years old because I stood in faith with God to pray. So I just want to stop there and say that. But let's pray real fast for those. A lot of you are saying things like digestive healing. I see that with Guitar Raymond and um, my eyes with Sharon and, and uh, dialistic dysfunction with Randy and reproductive system with Catherine. Uh, shoulders and left knee. I'm seeing that with Dawn. We have people from both YouTube and Facebook responding right now. Uh, my right arm with Christina. I pray for these things right now. I, I just even pray that you would see yourself on the other side of this, that this was never God's intention for you. This is never what God designed for your body, that God always had a purpose in your life. And he had a dream for you. And it was a completed body. It was a fullness in your body and your health. And maybe your body hasn't lined up with that ever. Or maybe you just have a condition right now. But we speak over you. And your body, when God dreamed of you before time began, he dreamed of your destiny and your body and your and your and your reproductive system. I see that with some people. He dreamed of your digestive system, your cellular system, your all of it, your neurology, everything. And I pray that God would bring it back into alignment with his original purpose because Jesus paid a price on the cross so you could be the full version of what he dreamed of before man kind of sinned and failed. And so God, one of the things that he does through Jesus and through the work of the cross is he brings that redemption. I pray that over you right now, supernatural healing. And I feel like, I feel the healing. I don't, I don't, and when I say this, I don't just feel like we're just praying a good prayer. I feel an anointing to pray this for you because there's going to be some healings right now. Some will be instantaneous miracles. Some might be help or some might be guidance for the problem. Some might be an installment of healing, but I pray right now that God would heal you. Jesus is a healer. It's one of his names. It's one of the names of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament is healer. And we pray that God would heal you and that he would bring faith in you for all your health journey, that everything that doesn't line up with what, what you need in your body, that you would have faith to contend until it does, that you would have go on the nutritional journey, the medical journey if you need to, but also a supernatural journey of healing. 
in Jesus' name. I just, I really feel that. And I'm, I'm seeing different ones of you who are still putting things. And don't worry, I'm still praying over those things. And our team will still be praying for you. I see Kathy Ray, healing for your mouth. You need your mouth. You need to be a voice. So we pray healing right now over your, uh, over your mouth. And rewiring of your mind, yes, Ken, in Jesus' name. God is so good at that. He's so good at retraining our neurology and our neuro, neuroplasticity changes as we read the Bible, as we pray. And that there's even been tests on that, which is so beautiful. Believing for energy and weight issues, healing. Yes, Car, I believe that too. God, I pray that we would all have our full energy of what we need in Jesus' name. Well, I wanted to stop there just because I felt it. I felt that for you guys. I felt that. And if you're watching back later on, this is still for you. The, the prayers don't just work when you're live. The prayers work because they're biblical and they're truth about Jesus for you. And they could work a year from now or 10 years from now. I believe that God is so good. And he, and when we come to agreement with his purpose, that it brings alignment in our mind, our body, our soul, our spirit, which is so awesome. Well, we have this story, and I think this is really interesting because so many Christians and conservatives are making cartoons really for the first time on this level. There's so many cartoon projects, both movies and, and television shows that are coming out and I'm here for it. I think this is so important. And I think of this, there's been a revolution, you know, in the midst of, um, you know, what's happened with Disney. They've lost one third of their market value because they've gone over so many woke topics. They've put so much critical race theory, um, uh, homosexual agenda, LGBTQ agenda, drag queens, these kinds of things within their cartoons, within their, within their Disney Plus, within their Disney Channel. Nickelodeon has actually featured drag children. They've had commercials with drag queens. They've featured a lot of, uh, talking about, you know, gender pronouns and these kinds of things. And I think a lot of parents just don't trust them. Even if parents don't know what to think about that, they'd rather keep their kids from it than let their kids watch it freely. And there's just more options now in the way that we digest, <clears throat> excuse me, there's more options now in the way that we digest media because we don't have to watch the commercials. A lot of companies are peddling to our children, which are so weird. There's so, even Lego went woke in, uh, recently and went LGBTQ plus recently with, a lot of stuff that you're thinking they're marketing this to children and their sexual themes in the Lego sets. And it's just so wild. Well, this has created such a niche opening for Christians, for epic projects, for your kids. And I love this, you know, challenging edutainment, which is, you know, these, these shows that are trying to indoctrinate your children and certain themes that is given, taking away your power to really explain this when your kids are ready to hear these themes from your perspective. It's like cartoons are taking on the educators you know, the mainstream school educators in some of the most liberal cities are now working with cartoon companies to try and put themes in that just shouldn't be there at all. And we've seen this theme. I know a lot of um, extreme right, right Republicans talk about go, going woke. If you go woke, you go broke. And in recent years, major networks like Nickelodeon and Disney have introduced content that tackle these subjects in such a way that they really have lost a lot of market share. And it's causing that void for something to fill out. You think of billions of dollars were going there and all of a sudden, there's all these cartoons that have emerged in the Christian community and also by conservatives. And that's because these companies have not handled their assignment well. And Nickelodeon is becoming a dinosaur. Disney Plus is losing. I mean, they've lost so many billions of dollars for Disney Plus. They're having to cancel a lot of their projects that they know that their mainstream families will not honor. 50% of Americans are conservative in their moral values. And so they don't like this kind of content because they consider it an issue of morality. Whereas a lot of people who are trying to educate or edutain, don't think that that's right for us to have conservative values. And as these major channel loser putting a void is emerged, like I said, and it's actually causing wholesome, high quality children's entertainment that doesn't carry political or educational agenda in the same way. This provided some uh, opportunities for companies, even like Universal, to fill these big shoes of Disney through movies like Super Mario Brothers, which has topped the box office. Its first five days, I think it was like at four or 500 million, now it's at 700 million haul which is just fun entertainment with no agenda compared to Disney's last big worldwide release, Strange New Worlds, which featured a gay teen flirting with the other child in front of its parents. So it's gay children who are it's sexualized. They're actually flirting. And it only did 18.6 million the first five days and was considered Disney's biggest disaster and failure in history. And it was completely attributed by uh, news media because of an agenda of se sexualizing children in a kid's movie that they said, hey, this is what's happening. And parents just didn't stand for it. They didn't want to go. So this gap or void has done something else. It's allowed conservatives. You're, you're seeing some of the B-roll right now if you're watching instead of listening. It's allowed conservatives and Christians to create really good content. Angel Studios recently finished a $100 million raise for their content. And their David movie itself was the highest crowdfunded movie in history with a whopping $49.7 million investment. Now, this is something that could compete 
with a Disney or a Shrek or a, a, a Super Mario Brothers, but it's about the life of David. Christians want new content for their kids and they're talking about this, but they're also putting their dollars behind it. We're seeing that for the first time in history where Christians are realizing that there needs to be a rise of Christian content. And this is such a welcome change. The success of these Christian shows is not only highlighting the demand for this type of programming, but also signals this huge shift in the entertainment landscape that I'm here for. Again, I think it's so important. The emergence of this Christian content that's both entertaining and value-driven is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of these faith-based community people that are saying, we're going to lend our careers to this. And there's people coming out of Disney, Nickelodeon, people coming out of major companies and saying, I'm going to lend my my talent to this instead, or I'm going to actually create projects, write projects, animate projects in these veins as, as part of my career, even if it's not the full-time career. And as more of a Christian's creators step up to fill the void left by mainstream networks, it's becoming evident that this may be one of the best things to ever happen for Christian children and their families, because they finally have an alternative that puts the word deeply inside of them, the moral values, the moral compass. And I want to look at a few of these shows as you're seeing them on uh, you're seeing some of the background you're, if you're seeing the B-roll. But there's one show called The Garden, former Nickelodeon cartoon maker uh, from the Fairly Odd Parents. He has a new series called The Garden, which I think is brilliant. The Tuttle Twins, if you haven't read the Tuttle Twins books, they now they now have a TV series. And the first episode is free on YouTube. If you look at YouTube at Tw Tuttle Twins, and it's, it's so fun. Like, it's such a fun series. My daughters have been watching it lately. And then David movie, is the highest crowdfunding, like I said. And I love the David movie because it has just that feeling of epicness to it. I think it's gonna be really cute, sweet, deep, intense, and it's gonna be done by Christians for Christians. And that's the problem is that we haven't had many movies since Prince of Egypt that really speak on this volume. We also have Jungle Beats, which is for preschoolers. I think of that cow that's sharing how he's non-binary to other, or he or she, or is sharing their non-binary to the other animals to try to educate them in their gender roles and their pronouns. But we have Jungle Beats by Angel Studios, which is a preschool series you don't have to worry about at all. There's no weird agenda inside of it. We have the Wing Feather Saga, which is based on the New York Times bestselling weather, Wing Feather Saga books. And their first episode is also out now on YouTube, which you could watch, but there's still uh, crowdfunding for that series to become its full I don't know how many episodes are crowdfunding for, but that's exciting. Then TBN, who I work with, is uh, they actually went and bought VeggieTales and they have new seasons of Ve VeggieTales on TBN, or you can go to Big Idea Studios as well. And that's exciting because they actually have Paul Vishner speaking into it. A lot of the original people who made it so successful before it was licensed, I believe Universal, um, who still has a hand in it, um, but not creatively anymore. A lot of the people, when it went kind of mainstream and it just became a cutesy cartoon, it has gone back to its space roots with the silly songs and all. It's so good. And uh, TVN has also bought some of the other major Christian franchises, and they're going to be producing cartoons based on them as well. If you didn't know, TVN has a children's channel online. You can go there. It's especially good for your preschool and younger children. And so you can go there as well. It's a free streaming app, and you can get these uh, some of these series there as well. Allegories is another show for preschoolers, which is just so cute. And it's so, I mean, it tells it obviously an allegory through owls every episode. And I think it's so profound. So we have, and these are just a few of you guys. There's so many more projects I know about behind the scenes that are being worked on for your children. And I can't wait to for these to emerge in a, a more dominant way. These are maybe seven of 30 projects that I know about that I just want to bring to attention because they're either out or they're visible where you can really see what's going on. But I think over the next three to five years, we're going to start seeing not only a rise in Christian content, but it's going to be so good. It will be competing with the Super Mario Brothers or with the Disney movies in mainstream theaters. The, you, we saw that with Prince of Egypt. We might see that with David the movie. I'm really excited about what's coming out, and I hope you are too. But prayerfully engage with your kids over what they're watching on YouTube. YouTube at nine uh, years old, if you have children's app for YouTube, begins to introduce your children as some of the suggested videos to gender roles, to language about gender pronouns, to homosexual LGBTQ kids. Some people, when they've opened their, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Some people, when they've opened their YouTube app, when they haven't signed into their own account, those are some of the first videos their kids over nine are shown. And so when you understand that big tech, like YouTube, I love YouTube, but they are a secular company that has different values than I do. And so some of their values are, these are videos that kids should know. They want kids to understand critical race theory. They want kids to understand LGBTQ issues. One of the videos that popped up when we opened our app without having uh, being logged in was about kid drag queens. 
And that came up as one of the first suggested videos. So be careful with what your kids are watching. Don't leave your kids for hours on YouTube alone and make sure to block channels, which you can do on YouTube so that your kids don't see those. But there's so many types of YouTube videos, you can't block all the channels. You really have to be an engaged parent. So I'm excited about all these other programs, apps, and even Angel Studios and TBN that are coming up with alternatives of great videos for kids. And I love YouTube kids when it comes to creativity and videos and drawing and crafts. But then you get into some of the other stuff and it's really scary what's available there. Even TikTok for children is very scary. So I wanna encourage you to follow the ways of respectable parenting. Excuse me, as a Christian, follow the ways. And when I say respectable parenting, that means you are responsible as the gatekeeper for what comes into your child's life. And sometimes they're on games like Roblox or Animal Jams or these kinds of games. And these games have kids who are promoting these kinds of agendas. And there are, you know, there's one kids I was watching on the Animal Jams with my daughters were playing, they weren't paying attention. And these kids were fighting over their pronouns. And they were saying that there's hostile hate and reporting each other because one kid wanted to be treated one way. And this isn't a mainstream game that yes, they filter out bad language, but they don't filter out bullying. They don't filter out, they try to, but they can't, but they definitely promote LGBTQ plus and critical race theory and wokeness and all these kinds of things. So you are the gatekeeper. You have to stay engaged with what your kids are doing. Don't just let them be on call of duty forever without you monitoring what conversations are having with people in these games online. It's really important. So I think I'll talk about video games at some point. There's a lot of Christian video games that are coming out that aren't the cheesy ones. Yes, you can play Jesus in a game right now. I wouldn't recommend it. It's a terrible game. But there's some really good games that are coming out that Christians are behind. We'll talk about that in the future as well. Tell me what you want to talk about in the comments below, what you're interested in, what you want to hear from. I'm going to be doing interviews with people in the video game industry, with people who are making these cartoons in the future. But I wanted to bring it up to you now because as parents we have and grandparents, we have to be gatekeepers again for our children. Well, in light of that, you know, I wanted to have this on the same episode that we talk about just in, in, you know, we've just come a couple of weeks after the Nashville school shooting, which really hit the Christian community hard, but all the school shootings have hit all of our communities really hard. And I want to look at what God wants to do in the midst of this and give you a prophetic perspective, because I believe that God speaks to us. And I love the scripture in 1 Corinthians 2 that says, we have the mind and perceptions of Christ, the last verse there. And this shows us all about learning how to think like God and how we how to navigate as we think like God and cultural issues, politics, what's happening in the church. It's important to have his perspective. We know that, and that's why I do these prophetic perspectives. But I have a five-year anniversary of my book I'm going to tell you about real fast before we get there. And it's on sale right now. It's called God's Secrets. It's all about having his perceptions and having words of knowledge. And you get the, the book, the workbook, and the masterclass for $25. It's normally $85, but this helps support our show and our ministry. And I wanted to get into prophetic perspective right away, but I wanted to tell you this was available so that we can keep doing prophetic perspectives. We can keep doing the show. So thank you for all your support. When we mentioned like Birch Gold, our sponsor, or when we mentioned our school, or we mentioned our, our books that we have. Thank you so much for those of you who engage these books, because God's Secrets, best-selling book, the only book on words of knowledge that's gone into best-selling categories on Amazon in history. It's a, it's a subject we need to know about right now. But let's talk about the prophetic perspective again. You know, the shootings and violence have broken out around the world, but especially in our nation. And Christianity can help solve violent cry, crimes. I don't know if you know this, or if you've ever thought about this, but Christians are first responders and we're called to respond not only in prayer and love, but also action. And God cares about violence that's happening all over the earth right now. Christianity wants to, you know, respond to these things, but we have to look for God's answers to help people through some of the violence that's happening in society. And we're going to see Christians praised by the news media, as well as politicians and educational systems, as God puts on display what his love looks like in nonviolent situations, meaning in violent situations with nonviolent preventative and aftermath nonviolent re resolutions that aren't just gun control. Now, gun control is something that we need a lot more help with in America. But at the same time, we also need the freedom to bear arms, the right to bear arms. And I'm not here to have that discussion, that debate. I want to have more of a discussion about how Christians are called to bring nonviolent resolutions first. That's our first calling. Now, if you're a police officer, if you're in the military, it may be different. But as the average Christian, we're called to bring nonviolent solutions to school shootings, school shootings, these kinds of things. And we can do it in a lot of different ways. And God wants to give us, again, strategies. For those who are Christians, we know that Jesus' love helps to change the violence in people's hearts and can transform someone from the inside out. And where there have been school shootings and public violence in America, Christianity gives different options than just fighting back with weapons or personal security. And the Bible's filled with stories 
of warfare and violence, but also the Christian life is a spiritual battle, yes. But oftentimes we see examples which are so many of how God de-escalated violence and brought nonviolent options to solutions. And, and this is often overlooked by Christians, especially because there's so much politicized, you know, Christianity is really worried about our right to bear arms right now. The majority of Christians believe we are. And that's, that, again, that's a debate we can have later. And uh, I'm not against shooting or guns at all in the right context, but because of the fear of some of the, the conversations that are on the table of politics and schools in these places, we go there first. And yet as Christians, we have so many examples in the Bible of nonviolent um, de-escalation. And I think that's really important. And these stories are some of the most powerful ways that God has moved in the Bible. And we're going to look at some of those in a longer video I do this week about this prophetic perspective. But the acts of violence over America and many nations have caused people to take a public stand in a fight against gun control. And as people of faith, we can have an iron in that fire. But our real goal is to focus on what Christianity offers through politics, media, and even local law enforcement or school governances that they can't do. We have something to offer that they do not have. We have a God who loves us and hates violence. We have a God who intervenes through his people. We have a God who heals the hearts of offenders before they offend and transforms the trauma inflicted when nothing else can take away that trauma. That's who we serve as a God who, who goes into families. He knows who the shooters are before they're shooters. He knows who the violent are who before they're extremely violent. And it, Christianity offers the ability to go into neighborhoods, communities, and help people to grow into well-formed versions of themselves that God dreamed of and Jesus paid a price for on the cross. But a lot of politicians and news media villainize guns or try and blame shift on what the issues are. We know the real problem is about the breakdown of love and humanity, the breakdown of family, the breakdown of community. And Christianity has the tools to help heal mental illness, to bring responsibility and character to issues of security, and to help schools first by being a family nurturing community around students and teachers. We can help provide prayer. We can help provide wisdom. We can help provide counsel and support through these hard times. Remember when the shooting happened in Las Vegas and how I called some friends there that are part of a church there, and they said the city asked us because they know we have we have so much uh, success in our counseling center. They asked us to provide. They were they're paying for it, government paid for counseling by this Christian church for all the families who wanted counseling from the city. They wanted their counseling paid for that were local, and they they counseled people who were were victims of this terrible shooting, but they also counseled some people who are neighbors and friends of the shooter. And I think that's really interesting that. They were the first responders. I remember Hurricane Katrina when there was some violence that was happening in the the, the third uh, the French Quarter and the Third World Ward and uh, in all these other places, and some of that violence that was happening from the shootings that weren't being reported about from mainstream news. But there was this, I think three shootings that took out seven to nine people each from the criminals that were left over there. And one of the guys wasn't even a criminal. He just got so scared. He thought people were breaking into his house. He killed all these people. And he had a mental break because of what happened in Katrina. And churches there were the first responders to help the, the community heal from that, to, to understand what to do with that. Now, churches aren't just good healers aftermath. But I think of some of the youth pastors that have told me stories of kids who confessed they had violence in their hearts in their youth group. And they were able to mentor them and help them and reach out to kids that were hard to love kids. And I think of myself when I was a child and how God spoke to me when I was 11 or 12 years old to go after three children in junior high, the other kids that were like the least loved, the ones who had weird outbreaks, the ones who had stuff going on in their lives that nobody wanted to be their friends. And God said, be their friends and don't just do it as a project. Do it like love them as their, those are real friends, include them in your friendship circle. And it was really hard for me as an 11, 12, 13 year old. But now all three of them have graduated college. They have you know, incredible EQ. They have, they, they understand and, and they confess terrible things. I mean, I learned about things when I was 12, 13 that I wouldn't have known as far as human trafficking and brokenness from these, these guys. So I would have never known about that young, but because they, I became a safe place for them. I became a place they could process some things that I was able to bring to their parents and to counselors. And it was all because I said yes to Jesus, but they had set their life on a new trajectory because I said yes to God. And that's what Christianity does, is it causes you to be in the middle of sometimes the fires and the storms, relationally and socially, before they happen, before they break out. God is so good about de-escalating people's hearts, but we have to be part of the community. We can't do what's cool to us or just 
what makes us look good or what feels good. We have to, as Christians, part of the beauty of Christianity is that we do things that are against our own nature, but they're the nature of Christ. And we become friends with people we would never have chosen. We reach out in the community to people who aren't part of our racial system, our social economic status, whether they're richer than us, poorer than us. They're, you know, we, we reach out to the homeless. Christians are the first responders for homelessness around the world because we reach out in ways that are beyond our capacity because we're moved with empathy and compassion and love that comes from a source. I think this is so important. And often these attacks on Christianity or villainizing Christianity happens because, because people don't see the response. They haven't seen the context, contextually of what Christians have done around the world for people who are marginalized, disenfranchised, people who are displaced, people who are the bullies, people who are the ones who are the hard to love, that Christians actually have a responsibility to reach out to them and to love them and in the midst of that, we have had an incredible testimony of the world where politicians, government leaders, police officials want to work many times with Christians because we help secure people and that helps them secure society. And I think that's really important. There's going to be so much stories. There's so many stories of peace and reconciliation, community care and help coming out of the community about Christians because of what God's doing. And it's even happening right now in the recent Nashville school shooting, which has been uh, one of many shootings recently, but that one was so interesting that Christians have lent their voices. A lot of Christian celebrities did benefit concerts or raise money through their concerts in that little area, that little town. A lot of Christian musicians and country stars live there. And so they've lent their voices. They've raised support for the school. They affected families and for um, the staff. And they're looking at, you know, counseling alternatives and all these things that are uh, that are there. And that's a beautiful response. And that's not always the response in all these areas where there's school shootings, but I believe that it's gonna become more and more of the response and as many Christian celebrities, many Christian musicians, many Christian voices, pastors, communities, leaders start to say, this is this issue when it happens is our issue too. I know in Dallas, when the shootings happen, Upper Room Fellowship, when the racial sh shootings were happening, they jumped right in the middle of it and they were part of the solution and they talked to their local police forces and they tried to be a, a, you know, a broker between racial reconciliation and police force. And they paid a price for that. And they spent a lot of time in that. And they're now a trusted voice because of it. And I believe we're going to see more support raised up like that. And some of you who are watching might say, I know there's an alternative inside of me when this happens, not just to pray, but to do something, not just to give money. And that those are prayer and giving money is the first response we should do. But God is going to speak to you about things you can do in your community with the police force, with politics, with education, with your children's friends, with your children reaching out to people who may not be easy to reach out to, God's going to use you. And Christianity moves the needle forward to help promote change and peace and security in our society. We've seen that for generations. And there's Christian, or there's there's countries that don't have Christianity that are jealous of countries like ours in the UK or America or Canada who do have Christianity in our fabric of our society because we do have a help that they just don't have. We have a sustaining power of grace and compassion and financial help and and emotional help that they just don't have in the Middle East. They just don't have in parts of Asia. And I think it's so important that we celebrate that, but export it as well. Some of you are feeling you need to do something when it comes to school violence or gun issues. You're going to get directives from God. It might be as simple as to love that underdog use uh, who feels isolated that no one ever spends time with. It could be as intense as starting a school security initiative or creating products that's going to keep kids safe. We've heard of recently people who've you know, created door jamming systems for when there's a shooting. So someone cannot open the door. And these were Christians who created these. God gave them a strategy. God's appointing his influence around leaders who can make a difference. But he's also appointing leaders to make a difference. That might just be the price he's asking you to pay to love the world the way he does. That's a way that you would normally not want to love the world. You normally not want to engage. But he's compelling you. And that's a beautiful thing about Christianity is that God will compel people to do the hard things that no one wants to do. He's compelling somebody to do that. And thank God. Thank God that Christians will be fathers and mothers and men and women, true men and women. And there's some stories in the Bible that really focus on this. And I'm going to go into that again in a detailed way through our longer extended video. So make sure to subscribe and hit like and notifications in our YouTube channel. We'll also post it on Facebook so you guys can get it. And Rumble, you'll have it as well. But I'll, I'll go even more into this. I think it's really important that we go through some of the stories in the Bible that show de-escalation of violence instead of just war. Because the Bible is a, a Bible of love and the, 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 you know, Christianity is a religion that actually helps society, you know, societal needs. I think it's so important that we 
we live that way, that before we come with a gun argument, that we come with a Jesus argument, that we come with a Jesus first, before we come with an anti-gun argument, that we come with a Jesus argument first. So important, an argument that I could actually bring real change right now. And of course, do what you need to do politically too. But first, you're a Christian. First, you're a citizen of the kingdom. And so whatever nation you're in, it's important to have these conversations from a kingdom perspective as a global citizen of the kingdom of God before you're a global citizen or national citizen of your country. And of course, it's a blessing to be a citizen of a country. So I'm not wanting to minimize that at all. I love being an American. It's one of my favorite things. One of my favorite identities I have. At the same time, I'm a Christian first. And I really want to see these gun violence uh, issues solved in a real way by true family being put in place, by true community outreach, by true systems that can be put in place that aren't just policing and aren't just monitoring and aren't just taking away freedoms, but are actually healing issues, healing the land, healing the hearts. And I know you want that too. So let's pray for that. Let's pray that God's wisdom comes. That's the prophetic word this week is that God's wisdom is going to come in these situations. We're going to have the mind and the processor of God. So get the tools you need to get that so you can be part of the solution. And if you've been struggling with violence in your mind or your heart, get the help you need, get a counselor, open up to somebody, open up to somebody at church, open up to somebody for real until it's done. If you open up to somebody and they don't help you, go to where there's real help because there is help for you. That's not God's story for you. You shouldn't feel bottled up rage that turns into violence. That is not who you are. And that's not who, what God looks at you for. He's not, he's not ashamed of you. He may hate your behavior or he may hate that uh, that that violence inside of you, but he doesn't hate you. And he wants to change you. And he already has a vision for that change. So really give your life to God because he can change you. He can take violent tendencies out of you right now. Well, this is the end of the show. And I'm so excited that we've had this show today because we've talked about some really important things. And I do want to mention again, Birch Gold. I'm going to give him a special thanks. And if you want your packet, your free packet to help your financial future, remember to go to birchgold.com forward slash Sean Bowles. But we're on the journey of discerning together. And you guys... We are seeing incredible comments from you. We're walking out something together where we're not just looking at subjects so that you can hear what I think about them, but we're learning how to discern God's heart in the most serious issues that are happening right now in politics, entertainment, and the church. Let's keep praying. Let's keep discerning, and I'll see you next week.